Okay, so welcome back. Um, in this video, we're going to basically just breadboard a circuit that takes uh, two outputs from a signal generator. And you can see here we got the signal generator, channel one, channel two outputs. And we're going to take those two outputs and run them through a comparator to generate a pulse width modulated waveform. And what we're first going to do is in LT Spice, we're going to simulate that circuit and then see if we can duplicate it on the bench with a, a real comparator and with this signal generator and with a power supply and see if we get the same thing output. So if we start off, um, here's the circuit in LT Spice. And you can see on the left, I've got two sources. The first one is the sine wave which is what we're going to be generating a PWM signal from. And this sine wave, as you can see here, is 1 kilohertz. And here is a graph of the sine wave um, coming out of the circuit. And what I've done in here is I've chosen a sine wave, and I've given it an offset to make sure it's always in positive territory. I've got an offset of 3.5 volts. I've got an amplitude of 2 volts and a frequency of 1000 hertz, okay? And that's what you see here. Um, the next one is the triangle wave that I'm going to use to uh, run, we'll take both of these, put them into a comparator, and I've talked in previous video about doing this, um, uh, generating a PWM signal uh, using a comparison. So here I've got a 30 kilohertz triangle wave, and let me show you that. There's our 30 kilohertz triangle wave, and um, the way I generated this was I'm using a pulse function, all right? And I've got an initial value of zero. The on voltage, the peak voltage, you can see here, is six volts. And uh, no delay. Now, to generate the triangle, um, you can see here that it's a periodic waveform, and I have offset it so it's always in positive territory. And it is, since it's 30 kilohertz, the period is uh, 33 microseconds, okay? And this is 33 microseconds right here. So I set the period to 33 microseconds, and the rise and fall time are half of that, or 16.6 .6 microseconds. You can see 16.6 .6 to get up to 6, and then 16.6 .6 to get down, and that's 32, um, or 33 micro, microseconds, and that gives us a 30 kilohertz waveform. So now I've got those signals, and I'm going into a simple comparator. And what I'm using is an LM393, which is from Texas Instruments. And here's the spec sheet. And you can go through and see all the stuff in here. Now, um, you can get the model for this, the SPICE model for this, from the Texas Instruments web website. Um, I also, I, I bought this as part of a... Um, a group of, of multiple types of integrated circuits. And it was very cheap on eBay. It was, I don't know, $16 or something like that. And this was one of them, and there's like five or ten of these in the box. And um, <clears throat> so you can get a SPICE model from TI.com. And I showed you in a previous video about um, how to generate or bring in a third-party model into uh, LT SPICE. So what I did is I just took the downloaded model from TI and drag and dropped it in here. And you can see it automatically opens it. And as I showed before, you go to the sub-circuit and you right-click and create symbol and then follow the steps I talked about in the previous video. And you can uh, generate that um, this right here. And you just hook up the sign to one of these one and two terminals. And then I've got um, my power supply. I'm using eight volts. And I've got the power supply connected to terminals three and ground to terminal four. And then the output is going to be terminal five. 
Now, if you look in the um, in the document for this, you can see that in order to make a um, simple comparator, what you do is you add a pull-up resistor, which is what I've got here. And somewhere, yeah, here it is. I've got the, um, basically on the output, you add a 3K ohm pull-up resistor. And um, that will bring the output up to give you your PWM signal. So um, here I've got my 3K ohm resistor connected from the power supply to the V out. And once you do all that, you're pretty much all set. Um, now what I'm going to do is click on this and there is the, um, the PWM output. Now let me change the color here so you can see it a little bit better. So here you can see a, a value of 8 volts peak, 0 to 8 volts, because I'm using 8 volt, 8 volt uh, power supply. And you can see as the, let me get rid of the triangle wave. And you can see as the um, sine wave peaks, uh, it's mostly, it's got a duty cycle, it's up near one, and as it goes down to zero, it's got a, a smaller duty cycle, all right? So that's about it for the circuit. Now what we'll do is we'll go to the bench and we'll actually wire this up and see if we can duplicate these results. Okay, so here you are on the bench and I've got on this breadboard, I've got the um, comparator hooked up. And this is a dual comparator. I'm only using one of the uh, op amps in here. And you can see I've got, uh, coming in here in this red, I've got the 8 volt DC power supply. And I've got two 6K ohm resistors in parallel. You recall we needed a 3K from the DC to the uh, output. So I got two 6s in parallel, so that's our 3K to the output, and the white is the output, and this uh, blue is the ground. And over here, I'm applying VCC, which is the eight volts, directly to this uh, in terminal here, which is the positive DC. And then the only two remaining are these two right here, which is a green and a yellow. And those are the sine wave and the triangle wave uh, that we're using to compare. And you can see over here on the signal generator, I've got the sine wave at 4 kilohertz. I cranked it up a little bit to make it a little easier to see. I've got 4 volts peak to peak, which means 2 volts on either side. And on channel 2, I've got a triangle wave, and that's 30 kilohertz. And you can see that right here, the triangle wave. And um, I have a amplitude of six volts and an offset of three volts. And you can see here on the scope, this is the resulting PWM signal. And you can see the sine wave, you can see the, the uh, triangle wave, and the result of the comparison is this blue PWM signal. And I can tweak the, I can tweak this and you can see how it repeats. And of course you can change the frequency. So let's go to channel one change the frequency, and let's increase the frequency. And you can see I'm, I'm up to 8 kilohertz, 9 kilohertz, 10 kilohertz. And you can see the response of the comparison is working fine. And if I crank it down, I'm down to 2 kilohertz, 1 kilohertz. And then if I adjust this, you can see I can adjust it in real time and see the resulting PWM. So that's um, the very simple PWM generator uh, from our signal generator. So again, I think this is a great method for if you're going to work on electronics. Start out with LT Spice, model your circuit, and a lot of times you're going to, you know, hit yourself on the head and say, "Oh shoot, I forgot to do that." And you know, you don't want to short something out on the bench. You want to try it out first in LT Spice and simulate it. And once you got that, then you know you can copy something that should work. So hope this helps. Take care and have a really good day. Thanks.